During last night's game, there was an incident that by now all of you are more than well aware of. In this incident, you had Clippers forward Marcus Morris stepping on the back of the injured ankle of Luka Doncic. Now, at the time, the Clippers were rolling. They were up 30 points, roughly. And <clears throat> this came after a made Clippers basket. Luka's moving to get the inbounds pass. And you see Morris trail in his... His uh his path, he's going to guard Luca. The problem comes with his change in his gait. So as Luca is coming to the basket, he's not cutting or anything like that. But Marcus Morris comes through and full weight steps on the back of coincidentally the injured ankle. Now, yes, he is guarding him, but as you watch the tape, particularly from this angle here. You see, he, he takes a long stride with that last step, and he changed his rhythm of his steps, his gait, to make sure that he was able to step down on Luca's foot. And here's the thing, if it's an unintentional step, if you're walking through your house and you accidentally step on something that you didn't mean to, you didn't see it there, you let up. You don't put your full weight down on it. The fact that he full weight presses through Luca's foot, the back of his injured ankle and foot, to the point where he takes off Luca's own shoe, kind of tells you a lot there. Those shoes are not flip flops. They don't just pop off when there's a little bit of pressure. He had to step hard on Luca's foot. And yes, Luca falls to the ground after that because he just got flat tired. But as he's falling, the fact that Morris reaches out to him in any degree does not immediately signal like, oh, see, he's innocent. He didn't mean to. It was incidental. Incidental! Incidental, bro! He didn't mean to. It was unintentional. He wasn't he even looking at his foot. They're up 30. I don't even know why you're complaining. <laughs> These arguments are infuriating because how do you say for sure he's not looking at his foot? Like, I'm not saying he's head down staring at Luca's foot as he puts his foot down. He's looking at Luca, at least in the space of his back. He is glued to him, looking down in that general vicinity. He steps on him, and again, even if you didn't see it, you probably pull up if you didn't mean to step on a guy like that, unless you're trying to be dirty. Also, keep in mind who we're talking about here. Marcus Morris has a littered history with these kind of incidents. Whether you're talking about him smashing the basketball off of Justin Anderson, former Mavericks, head earlier this year. Okay, so he's looking at the elbow. And now watch him. <laughs> I don't know if I should laugh at that. Oh, did that just happen? Or you're talking about, hey, guess what? Same season. When Morris tried to crush Ben Simmons' head with his knee during a game. Oh, he's got him locked up. Yeah. Then he tried to play like it was Morris, was it? Whoa. Yeah, that wasn't uh, intentional at all. You're talking about a guy who throughout his time at Kansas in college basically had to be reprimanded by his own coach for throwing vicious elbows at opponents' heads. This is a guy who has always played dirty. This isn't new. Furthermore, even if somehow, even if we set aside all of his history and we looked at it and said, all right, I'm willing to grant you that's probably incidental. Look a few moments later when he tries to zaza Pachulia Luca's ankle. Now, Kawhi Leonard's career in San Antonio basically was brought to an end in that playoff series against the Golden State Warriors when Zaza Pachulia undercut him just like this on a three. He rolled his ankle, suffered a bad injury, missed the rest of that series, missed the entire next season, and the real rift between him and the Spurs organization occurred in his rehab and physical therapy the following year. He was traded, never played another game for the Spurs. 
That that's why the NBA made a rule calling that a flagrant. If you do that to a guy, it's not just a foul, it's a flagrant foul. There's no place in the game for that. So even if you want to say him stepping on Luca in this in this little picture here, oh it's incidental. He didn't mean to do that. What why would he do it anyway? He's up 30. There's already up 30. What's he gained from Luca being injured? I don't know, man. You know, the series is at that point still 2-2, even if we're, you know, granting, hey, you won that game. Oh, hey, guess what? There's at least still one more game. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Luca has been sensational at times in this series. 42 in game one, 43 in game four. Yeah. That's probably something worth acknowledging. And before foul trouble in the second half of game two, he had 21 at half, ended up with, I think, 28 for the game at that point. But yeah, it's kind of like he's been a problem for you. And he's not playing at 100%. And with KP being out, it's kind of like he's the only thing that could help Dallas with any kind of upset. Add to that, some of the Clippers players on their bench, who was very animated and very chirpy last night, taking exception to a collision between Luka and Reggie Jackson earlier in the game in which Jackson was elbowed in the back of the head and spent several minutes down on the court. Yeah, I'm going to say it's probably retaliation mixed with a little bit of, hey, let's just try to ice this thing. Let's just try to make sure that we can close this series out because their wonder boy is not able to play. Or at the very least, he's more injured. This is, this is a goon play. I understand that he's made a career of being a 3 and D type guy, an enforcer, but this is garbage. You're talking about one of the young upcoming stars in the league, a future face of the NBA, at least one of the faces of the NBA, and you're trying to significantly impact his career, possibly make it where he he's not the same anymore that's what you're trying to do it's a dirty play they're both dirty plays they're both unconscionable and he should be suspended for game six it's not a question it's not even a question after the game you had Luka Doncic talking about it and this is what he had to say uh, I have my own thoughts I, would, I hope it wasn't intentional. Uh, tell me, what do you think? Uh, it was I just very hope it wasn't intentional, but you know, every every person's gonna have their own thoughts. And just move on from there. Okay, thank you. Rick Carlisle echoed similar sentiments, pretty much acknowledging that yeah, hopefully it's not intentional, but it's very easy to see how it could be. Then on Twitter after the game, you have Marcus Morris addressing the allegations himself, pretty much saying that they're ridiculous and that he would never, ever do such a thing because he is a man of moral and character and he's been going for 10 years against the best, just playing hard. Again, dude, you've got a track record. We see the track record. Is this you? Oh, he's got him locked up. Yeah. Then he tried to play like it was Morris, was it? Whoa. How about this? Is this you? Okay, so he's looking at the elbow, and now watch him. <laughs> I don't know if I should laugh at that. Oh, did that just happen? What about this? Yeah, yeah. Morals. Yeah, totally. Honestly, the fact that you do it while your team is up 30 is even more disgusting. But... Your non-apology, even if you deny intentionally doing it, if you are accused of something in this case, and you have the slightest bit of the slightest bit of empathy, I guess is what I'm looking for, you probably say something to the extent of, you know, I wasn't trying to do that. I, it's unfortunate that th that happened. I hope he's all right. I'll reach out to him. You say something along those lines, something that acknowledges that, yeah, it's unfortunate that he got hurt on the play or that he might have gotten hurt on the play. It was not my intent. I'm just playing hard. That's what you say. 
You don't say no. That's bullshit. I didn't hurt anybody. I'm not out here to hurt anybody. I just play hard. Your, your answer, your response only makes it that much clearer that, yeah, you were taking a dirty shot. The fact that you found a way moments apart to take not one but two reckless, dangerous shots at a star player's, any player really, but a coincidentally star player's already injured and publicly noted ankle says everything you need to know. Did he accidentally step on Trey Burke? Did he accidentally undercut Tim Hardaway Jr. on a three-point attempt? No. No. Now, this game was allowed to get out of hand by Kane Fitzgerald. They did a terrible job managing this. That's why you had plays like this. That's why you had, hell, the first Reggie Jackson incident. That was noteworthy, too. There probably should have been something done about that to, at the very least, issue warnings to both teams. That's why you then get Tim Hardaway Jr. winding up and smacking Paul George in the mouth. I'm not defending it. Not defending it at all. He's lucky he didn't get ejected from that game. And, you know, given that they probably should, as a league, look at the Marcus Morris thing, you might argue that they should probably look at that, too, because he does wind up and he does follow through the ball, even though he gets a lot of ball initially. He does follow through and hit George across the face. His intent is clear. I would argue that if Marcus Morris's intent somehow was not clear when he stepped on the back of Luka's injured ankle, it damn sure was when he undercut him moments later on a three-point attempt. This has been a very physical series. It's been very physical, largely with the Clippers being given more leash to do this. Marcus Morris, game one, in the scuffle that got KP's second technical and got him ejected, Morris hits him in the throat. Morris instigated the incident, hit him in the throat, and then, yeah, he gets a technical, but he gets to stay in and keep delivering daggers on three-pointers, whereas KP, who had 16, or excuse me, 14 and 6 at that point in the game, his night was done. Now here we are, three and a half games out of the series without KP, and you can't help but wonder, man, you know, if KP's knee was always going to be a problem after game three, wouldn't it have been nice to have stolen game one with that? You could have instead been up 3-2 right now if you had KP. Instead, nope, their instigator, their agitator, their dirty player got away with it. And he's been getting away with it throughout the series because the worst thing anybody has slapped him with is a single technical. It's ridiculous, man. It is. But you know what? You got to hope that Luka is healthy. If you're the NBA, you have to freaking... I don't, I don't even care. Even if you're talking about whether it's Luka or not, you can't allow this kind of play to happen. It is too evident what is happening here. And if you're saying it's not what's happening here, you're a Clipper fan blinded by your own fandom, or you just are lying to yourself. There's no way that twice in the span of like 30 seconds, he finds a way to try and injure that ankle twice. You can't tell me that happens, and it's a coincidence. This is from Emmanuel Achu on Twitter. An NBA basketball court is 4,700 square feet, and Marcus Morris steps directly on Luka's publicly injured left ankle. Coincidence? You tell me. It's pretty clear it's not really a coincidence. And even if you want to say, hey, maybe somehow, some way, uh, maybe, kind of, could be. All right, then tell me how the other one is. It's not. It's either retaliation or it's trying to secure the series in game six by making sure the star player is even less healthy to go against you there. But what it's damn sure not is incidental and coincidental. 